video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to build a beautiful online presence in next to no time. Philip and I woke up in heaven today at John and Kamel's chateau and I'm just out this morning taking Lancelot for a little walk. Uh, I didn't bring my dressing gown so I'm just wearing my jacket over my pyjamas. But we are having an excellent start to the day. I think Lancelot is hot on the trail of John's dogs. I'll take you on our little early morning walk with us. This place is so beautiful. And now, of course, I am making a cup of tea. Come on, let's go see Philip. Lancelot's had the most marvelous morning imaginable, running with the dogs outside whilst I was having breakfast with John. <laughs> he loves it here. Come on. I've got changed and we're all ready to go out. But before we go, John wants to give me a tour of how his project's going because there are two habitable wings which you can see behind me and he's working on the third that was the dip and dance it was for the horses it was for, it was the outbuildings but it won't be for much longer so those three lucarne are new and there are three more going here oh it's going to be splendid and then on the back toward the garden will be six stone lucarne like these how so the idea stunning is to integrate in the same way as though it had been built hmm. 400 years ago Let's have a little look and see how it's getting on. I love coming to have a look at this project every time we're here. It's, it's moving well. It's moving actually quite rapidly. Well, it's on the fun bits now. Pardon? After all the structural work, now it's onto the yes, fun bits. You can now start to see what the rooms will look like inside. Now we're going up into the new part, which was all the old lofts. My goodness, it's such a huge space. And there will be a wall here. Yes. And a double door that opens into what will become the library. And it's my wife's books. Mm. And she was a voracious reader. So this is kind of a project for her. This is going to be Even homage to her. she would have approved it. She wouldn't <laughs> Because it's, no, it's too excessive. <laughs> Which, I mean, she was the voice of reason in our family. Yes. I and now that's it. Guess. Now you're running amok. Exactly. No. <laughs> She would not have approved. The bookcases will come out from here and leaving a, a space like this to those vertical beams. That will feel quite monastic in a wonderful way. There will be places to sit down, and have tables and that sort of yes. thing. So it can be used as you would a, uh, a university library. That's it, these Small private reading library. nooks everywhere. Exactly. Is this another Lucarne here? X marks the spot. Yes. Yes, all of these. So you can see how light it's going to be. There's right. going to be many more windows here. There will be a very large fireplace here, which we found in the UK, but it's French. It depicts a battle that the French actually won. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel it's right that it's coming it home to come France. It should come home. It should come home. I am so sorry. You probably can't hear anything because Lancelot is leading a merry dance and uh, it's causing quite a lot of noise in here. So now we're in your study. Now we're area. in my study. Since I retired... Now you need the study. Eight, now I need a big study. <laughs> someone may hire me. Who knows? And someone also has to plan all the next building projects. Well, that's something tells me there's correct. going to be a that's lot more. Correct. So the study goes from this wall to this wall. Yes. And you can get a sense raising <laughs> these has ah. changed everything. Yes, the views wonderful. Be beautiful. The view of the rest of the chateau from here. This will be a bedroom. This is waiting to be repurposed. <laughs> that is, we haven't planned anything for here. Ah, so you've got as far as the bedroom and bathroom. Exactly, Bath bedroom and bathroom. And then this we could use for storage. I always forget. I put all the fun rooms in and then realize 
you I can't, have nowhere to you put a suitcase. Put yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Well, it's a huge project. I can't believe this is just an extension for you, and it's, well, five times the size of most people's flats. Uh, it's about 400 square meters. It's unbelievable. Yeah, my flat in London is 55 square meters, I think. Yeah. People climb mountains, you say, why? <laughs> People do crazy projects, you say, why? I think one of the challenges you have in these, in these places is figuring out how to repurpose so that it lives. And of course, on all of these places, whether we're talking about La Lande or La Beauce, they always changed. Every generation Always. they change. Or they die. It a concept. Yes. These buildings were used as part of the farm, effectively. They were Correct. used as part, and people don't have farms in these no. places anymore. No. So no. you have to find new uses. Exactly. And you'll be able to use this and enjoy it, but you're also doing things here that you'll never see. I saw all of the trees you planted. We'll never see those. None no. of us will see those big. Although, you know, they'll be pretty big by 140, which was my plan to. Yeah, okay, fair uh, enough. Yeah. I'm, I was planning on 125, but now I see that I was aiming small. 140 is a nice round number. <laughs> now we're going over to John's new project. That wasn't quite enough of a project. So John's recently bought the entire farm opposite the chateau that of course used to belong to the chateau. So you're putting the estate back together again. That's exactly right. And the, the, the jewel of this place is the pigeonier, which is covered in concrete now has to be stripped off. Uh, the wood inside is just glorious. That's a 400 year old structure. You could put a four story dwelling inside oh, how with a little, a little glass elevator. You could have three or four bedrooms. You could have a, a whole floor of living space. It's like a Rapunzel tower. And a kitchen. You open up all the windows again. This building is also potentially very interesting. Yes. Uh, because it it has the same arches on both sides. Again, it has to be opened out. It was used for agricultural purposes for decades. And this, isn't this charming? It looks like it's well, just a roof coming out of the ground. It's, it's like a it's, hobbit house. It's an odd thing. It takes you back in history. There was a lake in the, in the far distance with a huge well with a pump room. Pump room then pumped the water up the hill to storage tanks below this building. Ah. And from there, it was pumped to the well at the chateau. Then there is an entire other courtyard of incredibly charming buildings and, well, a huge barn with a silo that's just being emptied by the farmer who sold to John. So that's going to be coming out bit by bit. Are they actually taking it down today, are they? Yes, they are. That looks quite dangerous in a wooden barn, doesn't it? Yes. I'm glad it's not a hot day. <laughs> yeah, children yeah, are a bit concerned. Just to Notre Dame before we're done. <laughs> you know, with the beams going up. But they're careful. Yes. This building again is, is 400 years old. Well, the door is locked, but we can see well through this window. Look at the beautiful flooring with the terracotta tiles. A lovely fireplace. And this is just one of the rooms. Beautiful beamed ceiling. It's great to be able to reclaim it and pull it all back together. Oh no, it's wonderful. You're really making this chateau so beautiful. Well, John, I think this chateau is very, very lucky to have you. Well, that's nice to say, but I know, it's you, know, true. you do it for the next generation. Well, we've left Philip and Kamel behind. Philip's coming later and we're going on an awfully big adventure. Where are we going? <laughs> what is this awfully big adventure? Well, we're going to try to get lunch on the way to a abandoned and ruined chateau that was ruined a few year, hundred years ago. Turn right. Because they took the stone from a good part of that chateau and incorporated it into Valencay. So on our way to see the Chateau de Valencay, we'll be stopping at the ruined chateau that was ruined because the stones were taken from it to build Valencay itself. So that's quite exactly. a story we're going to be seeing on our way. We have arrived at the most charming little French village and the restaurant we're going to is here. We are a bit concerned because it's basically two o'clock and in France you can only have lunch between 12 and 2. Nobody understands if you would ever consider eating outside those hours. So we might not be allowed to eat but oh, it's so pretty. It scarcely seems real. Let's keep our fingers crossed because I am a bit peckish actually. 
We are so lucky because they don't usually allow anyone to arrive after 1.30, we've discovered. But they've said as long as we only choose a starter and a dessert, they'll still serve us. So John and I have both chosen the asparagus with poached egg. It's local asparagus. And then we're going to have a platter of cheeses. I'm in a very savoury mood today. And it is such a charming place. We've ordered a half bottle of wine, or as I like to call it, a lunch bottle. We have a little starter, and I actually didn't catch what it was, so this is a voyage of discovery. Let's, let's see. We think it's a sort of asparagus mousse. It's absolutely delicious, whatever it is. But John's a bit worried that that was the starter. So we did order the asparagus, and now we're a bit worried about hunger suddenly. But we have plan B. Yes, the bread is plan B. And for some reason, John brought toffees. <laughs> Dessert. <laughs> Huge relief all round. It's going to be okay, John. We're all right. We have the local asparagus, the poached egg, and these little marshmallows, actually. Marshmallows made of local goat's cheese. It's time for the cheese. I do love a cheese trolley. There aren't enough cheese trolleys in life. This one is the very famous local goat's cheese. It's called a balancé. Obviously, for the chatter we're about to go and see. This is France in a plate, isn't it? Mm. And I got each of the different types of cheese. So this is a sheep's milk cheese. These are goat. And this is a cow's milk cheese. Bit of everything. This was incredible. So delicious. And they were so kind. We arrived after closing time. They still fed us. So I really recommend the Auberge Saint Fiacre. And they have no idea that I have been filming for you all. So they weren't being kind because of the vlog. They genuinely did not know. They still don't know. It was absolutely delicious. What a day. And now we're continuing our explorations. I'm going to see the ruined castle that gave its stones to Valence. Well, as John just pointed out, I don't think we have to look too far for the ruined chateau. I think we're looking right at it. We're with Bridget, who is the owner of this most beautiful chateau. Mais c'était énorme. Oui, c'était énorme. Mais il y a bien longtemps. Oui, but amazingly, there is one room still usable inside this ruin and it is uh, available for chambre d'hôte. So you can actually come and stay here. Oh, mais la beauté. Oh, it's heartbreaking and eerily beautiful at the same time. Mais c'est absolument magnifique. Je voilà. suis époustouflé. Il y avait l'habitation de ce oui. côté-ci, sur le village au sud. Oui. Et après, il y avait une cour hein, qui faisait le tour oui. carré, rectangulaire, avec des arcades et un étage au-dessus. Il ne reste plus que ça. And, and what you have not seen is how much work they've done to stabilize the stone. Yes. Because it was left as a ruin, of course, and over time, time would take its tolls. And they have placed many of these stones back in place painstakingly over a period of years. Tout à fait. Nous avons bloqué les pierres oui. pour éviter qu'elles tombent plus. Hein. Mais euh, il ne reste plus beaucoup de, de choses. Non, mais c'est merveilleux que vous sauvez ce qu'il y a. Voilà. Et donc, euh, bah, la, pierre, la chambre se trouve dans la tour, la, la, la seule tour en état. Et voici la chambre. Oh la chambre. Mais c'est une splendeur. Pour les, pour les autres. This is just, I mean, I, I, as you'll know, I'm very, very rarely lost for words. But I was not expecting this. It is beautiful. C'est moi. Even with the panelling still there around the windows. It is so, so beautiful. I'll show you the bathroom. The loo is through there. John's visiting that. It looks pretty small, so we'll go and visit a different area at the same time. This beautiful bathroom with the old stone still showing. Huge shower and a very, very beautiful sink area. And again, a beautiful view. I am feeling quite tearful here. To think that they have saved what remains of this beautiful ruin and that it's now livable in this small way. Look at the vault. Well, if you want to come to the area and stay somewhere where you will wake up certainly feeling like a princess, I absolutely recommend this. I think Philip and I will try and come and stay one night. 
And of course, the most important thing in the world, tea-making facilities. This is the ruin of the Chateau de Veuil. And this is the town where we went to the restaurant as well. And when you step out of the tower, the only remaining tower, and you see this arcade which used to sweep all around a courtyard, you're just struck by how magnificent this chateau must have been. Brigitte's just been telling me the history of the chateau and why it became a ruin. In fact, what happened is it was owned by the Cheverny family. Now, Cheverny is a huge chateau in this area, very, very beautiful, still privately owned chateau. But at the time, it had very bad soil around it, very marshy soil, and they couldn't work the soil in the area that they came from. So they had this chateau and the soil around it, which was wonderful agricultural soil, and they lived here for about a 100 years working these lands even though they came from Cheverny. And eventually, they discovered how to drain the soil at Cheverny. They therefore decided to move back there. They built this spectacular chateau that is now there, and they left this place. And this place was sold to many other people. Eventually, it came to a family that had 17 chateaus. So they'd really bought it just for the agricultural land and not for the chateau itself. They weren't living here. So other than the 100 years that the Cheverny family were here, it was very, very rarely lived in. And then Talleyrand bought this chateau, which which was falling into disrepair specifically to take the stones from it. And he took the stones from a wing that would have been just behind me. That was the main wing of the chateau where the family would have lived. It had the best views over the village. It was on the south and it probably would have had the best stones as well. So he started by taking that down and using it to build a lot of the outbuildings in the Chateau de Valence. After the death of Talleyrand, it continued to fall into disrepair. And actually the local villagers, whenever they needed to build something, would come and pilfer the stones from here. And and build in the village and eventually it came into the hands of Brigitte's family and they cannot afford to rebuild this chateau but they are the first people in all these centuries who are trying to preserve what exists and you can see behind me here that they have been propping things up they've been stopping any further stones from falling there was a huge hole in the wall of the room we've just been to they bricked that up and pretty much every penny they make is spent on ensuring that what remains of this beautiful chateau does not disappear forever c'était un um, carrière de pierre Oh, mais quel dommage. Incroyable. Incroyable. Ça ne pourrait pas se reproduire aujourd'hui. Mais ça s'est fait beaucoup dans, dans les siècles passés de prendre un château, de récupérer les pierres oui. et de reconstruire autre chose. Ça s'est fait beaucoup. They're not just helping to fund this through the room that they're renting. They also host weddings here. They have a beautiful courtyard where they can have the wedding and a huge room to host the weddings as well. And then during the course of the entire evening, the ruined chateau is lit up in the background. Pretty magical backdrop for a wedding. Looking at this, I feel so incredibly fortunate that Lalande won't fall into this state because of all of you viewers, because of the patrons of the Chateau Diaries, because of everyone who adopted a star in the Chapel of Lalande, and because of the sponsors of these videos. And today I'd like to tell you about Squarespace, who kindly offered to sponsor today's video with this ad. For those of you who don't know Squarespace, it's the perfect place to start to launch your brand to the world. It's all in one site makes it easy for you to create a beautiful website, custom merchandise and much more. Squarespace guides you through each step of the process. It starts by asking you which type of industry you're in, what you're hoping to use your website for, and then presents you with a huge range of stunning templates to choose from. You can customize these, or if you're feeling super creative, you can make your own site. If you're interested in selling merchandise, Squarespace will manage all of your sales, inventory, and shipping. If your business is one that you do in person, it can manage all of your bookings and appointments. And if you want to sell your knowledge to the world, you can even create your own online course or pay to view videos. So if you've been dreaming of launching your career online, Squarespace is the perfect place to start. To take the first step in turning your dream into a reality, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash the shadow diaries to save 10% of your your first purchase of a website or domain. Now we're arriving in the town of Valencia and we're going to go straight to the castle to see where those stones ended up. Here we are at one of the most glorious chateaus of the Loire Valley and this is the chateau that would have existed when Talleyrand arrived and it's the outbuildings that we used the stone for. 
Prince Talleyrand was an extraordinary diplomat, though it does depend on who you ask. Either he was the greatest survivor or the greatest betrayer of the 18th and 19th centuries. He started off in life as a priest, he even became a bishop, and then he went into government, serving under Louis XVI, the revolutionary government, Napoleon, Louis XVIII, and Louis Philippe. That is the most extraordinary accomplishment in an age when people tended to die when the regime that they were supporting fell. I hope for our friends' sake that they don't need more blocks of stone here. It does look a bit concerning. I think that last surviving wing might be about to be pilfered for more stone here. Doesn't that clock on top look strikingly modern? It does, it does. So unusual. <gasps> Well, isn't this the most beautiful sight? I don't know which I'm most excited about. Beautiful. Oh, we know it's a serious day when you've busted out the Louis Vuitton Lancelot. <laughs> You're in your very best outfit. Lancelot is going to the greatest babysitter of them all. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to mommy and daddy. Bonjour, Gilles. Ça va? <laughs> you know that Raffi and Leia are going to be watching <laughs> that next. We have to get a big Ikea bag for that. <laughs> It's a good look, John. It's a very good look. <laughs> and we're not seeing Talleyrand's home on just any old day. We are seeing it during a local flower festival. And I use the word local very specifically because it is the first totally local flower festival in France. What a beautiful town and a beautiful chateau. We've stopped at the local supermarket because we're eating at John and Kamel's again tonight. So we're going to get some wine and some champagne to take back. I might get a bottle of the local wine, Valencia wine, because we've seen the chateau. I think it would be only fitting to drink the wine. I'm picking up a camembert because those of you who saw this week's Patreon video will know that we went on quite a huge adventure with John in the local area to the auction of the contents of a chateau near here. They were also selling off carriages. Spoiler alert, John bought three. But at the same time, we went to a tiny porcelain manufactory and we bought a lovely little porcelain pot to bake camembert in. So we did promise John at the time that we would come back with a camembert and bake it in the oven for them. I'm picking up some garlic as well so that I can stud it with garlic in the oven. I am so happy. I just spotted to rally biscuits, my favorite things. Okay, let's take those for apéro. Here are all of the local wines. So I'm looking for a Valencé to try this evening. But what is interesting here, as you can see, there's Cheverny wines. That's the original owners of the ruined chateau that we saw today. I've got the camembert ready. You see, I just stud it. I don't know why I'm showing you, you can't eat it. So I'll the the garlic. Last, I show you everything. That's what it is, love, darling. Look what I did. Very nice. <laughs> Studded it with garlic. I'll put a tiny oh, bit of wine on at the last minute. Oh, really? Pop it in the oven like that. So you go. Oh, that's pretty dramatic, oh, Sorry, bud. No, I like it. So it goes the ice is going into the ice cooler. So it goes on with the lid and into the oven. Yes, right? and we'll take the lid off Why maybe later and let it bubble away. I know nothing. Neither do I. I've never it's used right. one with a lid. I've always put it in like this before. The lid. We've realised that by cooking it with the lid on, what we've done is we've stuck the lid to it. I it's not coming so. off, is it? Let's so see if I can wiggle it out with your. Yes, wiggle, wiggle away. It's it's definitely stuck. We yeah. promise that is camembert in here. We can't eat the camembert, but it is there. And, and it's nice to know it's there. You got it? You think you got it? Yeah. Oh. Really? Do you think it'll be okay in there? Whoa, it's okay. No. It's all okay. It looks very caramelized. Half of the uh, cheese is on this thing. No, that's fine. 
You can also make the most beautiful pepper, chickpea, olive, and pickled onion salad. I think with crunchy onion too. And we've got the camembert with it. Oh, Kamel, that rice looks beautiful. And here we have pork belly with tomato and olives on oh, it. Goodness, too good. No. Oh, you're working no, on the edges, are you? Yeah, no, but is there, is there, there are more. It is? You're right, yeah. We'll keep going. <laughs> I'll put that in the, the trash can. <laughs> because you're from Normandy, were you saying? Well, yes. Oh, no. So the camembert is yes, important. Yes. yes. <laughs>